Morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, for coming to our press conference today. Uh, my name is David McNeil. I'm an ex-board member of the uh, club, and I'm a freelance journalist. Um, well, uh, as everybody in this room will surely know, uh, the uh, Rohingya uh, are a group of approximately uh, one million uh, Muslims uh, who uh, uh, lived or lived in uh, Myanmar, uh, in the country's west. Uh, hundreds of thousands of them. Uh, of course, have fled to neighboring Bangladesh amid uh, very credible allegations of uh, genocide by the Myanmar military. Uh, as you also know, of course, uh, the Myanmar de facto leader, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, was uh, here in this country this month. Uh, and for many, uh, her responses on the issue of the Myanmarese uh, problem and uh, the Rohingya was evasive and unsatisfactory. And uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe uh, also was questioned on this, but he did little to uh, put her on the spot, uh, presumably because of Japan's economic involvement in the country. Uh, that makes our speaker today uh, very timely. Uh, Dr. Uh, Maung Zarni, uh, is a uh, veteran activist. Uh, he has told me that he's been involved in the struggle uh, for the Rohingya for 30 years, so he's battle-scarred. He's the leader of the Free Rohingya Coalition. Uh, he's also an academic and a well-known campaigner for the rights of Myanmar's beleaguered minority. Uh, he is going to speak for about 20 minutes on this issue uh, in English. Uh, we'd also like to just introduce uh, we believe from the floor there are two other people who would like to make a comment. I think uh, we have uh, Michimi Muranushi, is that right? Uh, a professor at the Department of Law at Gakshuin University, and uh, Zhao Min Hut, who's the di executive director of the Rohingya Advocacy Network in Japan. Uh, those two people will also be asked to give comments, but they're not sitting at the table. Uh, can I just, a couple of bookkeeping things, can I just ask you if you'd be kind enough to make sure that your mobile phones are switched off before we begin? Uh, and would you give uh, Dr. Zarni your best attention, please? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everybody. I'm really pleased to be here, uh, particularly the, um, the subject matter concerns the grievous crimes that uh, my own you know, uh, uh, colleagues, friends, and classmates, and family friends have been involved in various capacities. Um, I want to make uh, four points. One is uh, personal, because uh, you know, I understand that this is the uh, issue about the, the Rohingya people, uh, but I think where I come from, uh, as a person is is quite relevant here. Uh, I'm not here as an um, average Burmese. I came from a Buddhist, predominantly ethnically Burmese, an extended military family. Yeah. And my, two of my great uncles have great ties with this armed forces and my extended family members from both my mother's side and father's side have served in this armed forces. And my late great uncle was Aung San Suu Kyi's father's uh, classmate, friend, and next door neighbor when they were young post-teenagers studying at Rangoon University. And the younger brother of that uh, great uncle was the first commanding officer under whom the retired dictator General Than Shui served. And in fact, it was him, my own late great uncle, who married Than Shui and his first wife. And the, the, my own uncle, my mother's younger brother, was VIP pilot from the Air Force for General Ne Win for 25 years. I was a military academy cadet who did not join the armed forces. So, so I have a very, very, long family connection with this armed forces. And I grew up thinking that to love Burma is not simply to be Buddhist, but to join the military service. That is the ultimate expression of patriotism. And not far from here, there was a you know, Nakanoku Japanese Imperial Army Intelligence Training School. 
That was the school that produced uh, General Nguyen and several other young Burmese nationalists to study under Kim Pei Tai, Japanese fascist military intelligence. And I also wrote the first ever study from the University of Washington Law School that called my own country's geno genocide by its own name. So that aside, I want to uh, talk about facts and fictions, facts and myths about the Rohingya. We cannot have a, either accurate reporting or serious policy discussions unless we know what the facts are. The facts are the Rohingyas are officially considered in writing in the Burmese Language Encyclopedia, Volume 9, 1964, published by the government of Burma. In fact, it was published two years after Nguyen came to power in a military coup in 1962. In Burmese language, this is a photocopy of an authentic document. Aung San Suu Kyi has access to this. Everyone has access to this document. It says irrefutably and unequivocally and officially, Rohingya people are an official ethnic minority who has an ancestral land in northern Rakhine state of Myanmar. They are predominantly Muslim. There are some Hindu Rohingyas, so meaning that Rohingya is an ethnic identity, not a Muslim identity. They are f mostly farmers and fishermen, and their faith is Islam. This is what the Burmese government said officially. Yeah? And the Burmese government also claimed and the Burmese public blindly believe that Rohingyas are agricultural migrant workers. That came after 1824. That was the year when we had the first Anglo-Burmese war and we lost that in, uh, within a year. So they are colonial migrant workers, unwanted and unwelcome. But they were there as a result of the British colonial annexation of Western Burma today called Rakhine. That is what the Burmese government claim. This is the fact. This is historical primary evidence. This is as primary as any historical evidence can get. Published 10 years after the French Revolution in 1798 at the Royal, this was a, 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 from a paper that was given by the F, then British East India Company staff and Scottish medical doctor by the name of Francis Buchanan. And he was also an, at what we would call ethno-linguist. So he said here, the Rohingyas are a group native to Arakan, meaning Rakhine. They are Mohammedans, followers of Muhammad. They speak a language called Rohingya. Yeah. And so these are the facts that the country and it all pillars of the Burmese society, starting with the spiritual leaders, meaning Buddhist monks and nuns, intellectual class, including overwhelming majority of the Burmese journalists, academics, writers, cartoonists, artists, movie stars, models, yeah, all the way down to the farmers and rickshaw drivers and fishermen. And Aung San Suu Kyi, various presidents and commanders in chief reject. This is what they say. These are official lies. We don't have a group called Rohingyas. This was Thane Sain, ex general and president, who gave a, an address at Chatham House in London on the, on the uh, I think like 14th of July 2013. We wrote through 10 days ago. Don't destroy our country by creating a fake ethnic group. Number three, this is from Senior General Mei Online. 
who is wanted at the ICC as far as the uh, United Nations fact-finding mis uh, mission. They are descendants of the colonial era Bengali migrant farm workers whose presence is an unfinished business. The finished business is post-genocide. And then finally, but not least, Aung San Suu Kyi had the audacity in the face of irrefutable evidence that these are our own people, despite the fact that they are darker skinned, they are Muslims, and they may have a bi uh, origins, like Indian subcontinental and, and uh, Arakani from Myanmar. Don't use the word Rohingya. This is the, the line that Suu Kyi has taken consistently against United Nations, and this is her telling U.S. Ambassador Scott Marcial just a few months before she took the, re the reins of the uh, civilian government. 